What's going on guys? I'm Tyler, I'm still at TIFF 2019, and I'm here to let you know that Lucy in the Sky is no perfect movie. But the song is in it, just letting you guys know. And the movie centers around an astronaut who desperately wants to go back to space after the fact that she just can't... She just can't let go of the experience of being in the vast and large galaxy and has to go back to small puny Earth, at least based on what she's seen. And her desperation in the process alienates herself from her NASA colleagues and from her loved ones. And I was excited to see this movie because I do legitimately love Noah Hawley as a writer and director. Fargo is one of my all-time favorite shows. And Legion, from what I've seen, is good, but it has some issues that I feel like people don't really talk about. And we'll get more in-depth into that later. But... I was interested to see how he could branch from television to films, because in TV he gets to tell stories over an extended period of time, and with movies he gets to tell a story over the course of two hours, and I gotta say, this is his first movie, so I don't really, like, have any grudges against him, but he does have some stuff to work on. All of the traits of his television work, especially his visual style, do transfer over to this movie. We get a bunch of scenes that are motivated by philosophical dialogue about what characters have experienced. There are some visual metaphors for sure. Biggest ones that I've noticed are insects are portrayed as basically the hopes and dreams, but also the failures that Lucy is experiencing over the course of the film. The color blue is very prevalent in her costume design and the set design of the locations she works and lives in because she's going through a huge bout of depression after experiencing the greatest moments of her life and having to settle back down to mundane, normal Earth. And those moments are effective because they're much more subtle than the rest of the movie, which is really in your face when it comes to the style, especially when he uses aspect ratios. There are like four or five different aspect ratios inconsistently over the course of two hours and you know there are filmmaking techniques where some people just don't care about I don't really care about aspect ratios it really makes no difference to me but when you're drawing attention to itself by having the frame shrink or narrow down for no real reason other than to say oh she's being boxed in she's being cornered by everybody and it's just like there are other ways of showing that there are much more subtle ways, much more ways that don't make us rub our eyes every time it happens. And some of them don't even make sense. There's one bit where it's technically a split screen, but the second half of the frame is black. And then when she walks over to the other side of the room, it switches. And it's just like, what purpose does that serve? All those examples I just mentioned are kind of the reason I haven't continued watching Legion, because after seeing season one, it really struck me, and this is just my personal opinion, that Noah Hawley has become a little more concerned with telling stories differently as opposed to coming up with a different way to entertain us. When you have stuff like a long take with really crappy CGI or Dan Stevens having to explain his current situation by playing Rainbow Connection on the banjo... I'm not making any of this shit up. To me, that's just a sign of someone saying, hey, look how artistic and different I am. And it's just like, yeah, it's good to be different, but you still have to be entertaining. And the movie's not really entertaining because as dark and grim as his shows are, there's still a decent amount of comedy, horror, and action that gets our blood pumping and gets us invested in the characters. And that's the other problem with this movie. The characters are not very investing. He's taken the route of choosing to portray deliberately unsympathetic characters, and considering he runs Fargo, you'd think that'd be pretty easy for him at this point. The problem is most of the scenes revolve around characters' flaws and less on their redeeming or much more sympathetic factors, like Lucy, for example. She went into space. She got to see things that most of us never will in our lives. That should be really intriguing. But we don't even get not even five minutes of her being in space. In fact, the first two minutes of her saying, give me a few more minutes to enjoy this. And it's just like, well, how long have you been up there? Yes, the scenes that we do see in space, which are few and far between, do look nice, but 
it's not gravity. It's not even, it's not even the tr trailer for Ad Astra. It's just a generic, hey, look at this. This is the Earth. Haven't seen that before. Instead, we get a lot of scenes of her denying that she's being egotistical and saying that men are ruining her professional career when really she's responsible for pretty much everything bad that happens to her. The movie's aware of that, but it doesn't really give us a reason to forgive the fact that she is kind of losing her mind. Sidecasts, they do the best with what they can, but if they don't have any redeeming qualities, they also really don't have anything in general. Like, John Hamm plays a huge part as this colleague of hers that she becomes really close to, but we only see little bits of his personal life where you get to see that maybe he is just a genuine human being with problems, but again, we don't really see that very often. Zazie Beetz is in the film just to remind us that she's part German and can speak German, which if you've seen her in Atlanta, you kind of already know that. Hell, Dan Stevens is in the movie, and I didn't even realize that, because other than the fact that his hair and makeup looks different, he plays just a generic supportive husband who, while he freaks out about everything that she's doing, he really doesn't stand up for himself until it's way too late. The only side character I could really latch onto was Ellen Burstyn as Lucy's grandma because she was funny, she was very sarcastic and self-deprecating about the fact that well into her 90s, she's still going even though she's technically doing everything wrong in life. She she smokes with an oxygen tube in, in her nose. It, it's weird. Lucy in the Sky does have decent enough cinematography and it has good actors who give fine but pretty standard performances. It's just, for his first film, Noah Hawley doesn't really know how to handle the subject matter that he's dealing with, or really what stylistic traits work and which ones don't. The idea of an astronaut coming back to Earth and not adjusting to mundane Earth life is an intriguing idea and kind of a scary one too, but the movie just portrays that idea as a drama. The surrealism that you get isn't even really funny or terrifying. It's just there. And for all those reasons, I'm going to give Lucy in the Sky a 2.5 out of 5. Guys, thanks as always for watching. Look forward to more TIFF reviews. Pretty soon I will have videos for number seven, Sherry Lane. I'm looking forward to talking about that one because, boy, there's a ton. And I'll also have reviews for Bad Education and Dolomite is My Name. Look forward to those. Be sure to like, subscribe, check out my other reviews at noperfectmovie.com, and once again, thank you all very much for watching. Take care.